technical wizards, creative masterminds, the Disney Company's ultimate secret weapon. They are the uncredited geniuses behind every Disney theme park, ride, and attraction. They're called Imagineers, and they may just have one of the best jobs in the world. In the next hour, we'll go inside their incredible world of insidious elevators, realistic robotic figures, and spectacular splashes. And find out how they design and create the spine-tingling thrill rides and mind-boggling attractions that delight, thrill, and terrify the entire world. We've gone straight to the secret vaults of Disney's Imagineers and uncovered footage that has never been seen before. Watch now because we're revealing the unknown secrets behind Disney's biggest and best attractions and going inside the top secret world of the master magicians who bring them to life. They're Disney's Imagineers. Disney's theme parks. They're the most visited amusement parks in the entire world. According to Amusement Business Magazine, Disney holds the top five spots for theme park attendance. But what is the secret to their extraordinary success? Whatever they do, they want to do the best. And they bring in some of the most creative people that they can find to create that brain trust within the creative world. Who are the sorcerers behind Space Mountain? The geniuses behind the gigantic castles? And the mad scientists who bring pirates to life? For these demanding jobs, you need imagination to dream it up and engineering to bring it to life. That's why they call them Imagineers. The Imagineer is a person who brings storytelling and art and design together with technology and engineering to create Disney theme park magic. They're the brains behind every Disney theme park and attraction. And somehow they keep topping themselves with one thrilling hit after another. That's what makes their attractions the bar that everybody else is trying to achieve in the industry. Every day, more than 100,000 people on three continents in 10 theme parks enter the imaginative realms they create. You can soar over London with Peter Pan, follow Indiana Jones on a forbidden adventure, or fall to your doom in an abandoned hotel. These rides and attractions are the pinnacle of theme park design. up with this mind-boggling array of awesome attractions. It all started back in 1952 when Walt Disney had a brilliant idea. He went to his best film animators and told them they were going to be theme park creators. One day he walked by my desk and he said, I want you to work for Disneyland and you're going to like it. And he walked, walked right on through. He didn't wait for an answer or anything. For Imagineering, California's Disneyland is where it all began. They started out working at Disneyland and then have built virtually every park and every attraction within the Disney organization since then. In those days, Imagineering was known as WED Enterprises for Walter Elias Disney. But people were confused by the name WED. We got a little tired of getting all these phone calls from people who wanted to, us to arrange marriages for them. So we changed it to Walt Disney Imagineering. Since California's Disneyland, the Imagineers have taken the theme park world by storm. You could say they set the gold standard, and these days, everyone tries to copy them. What I find fascinating today in any theme park design, you talk to the people who did the design, and invariably, you'll look back and see that this person was trained by, or the person they were trained by was trained by, somebody who worked for Disney. Most people take it for granted, but the scope of what the Imagineers do is absolutely huge. Artists, sculptors, architects, computer scientists, and engineers. People are always asking, 
what does an Imagineer do? What's your typical day? And, and your answers, your first answer is always there is no typical day. Imagineers are people who really try and create impossible things in a real world. Impossible things in a real world? Sounds pretty tough. So let's start at the beginning. The very first step, brainstorming. The Imagineers call this stage blue sky. At this point, anything is possible. Typically, or quite often, a blue sky process or blue sky session can be a blank sheet of paper where we literally don't know what we're doing. Uh, and we start with that and take off. Every Imagineer agrees there's one crucial element that sets their attractions apart from the competition. And it's probably not what you think. The most important element of every attraction is the story. The show has a story based on story. It starts with a story. The story. The story. The story. In a theme park? Well, the story is so important to attractions is, is because it is the glue that holds it all together. It is the emotional connection. Whether it's a classic Disney animated uh, film story or a story that belonged in the past to somebody else or something we've completely made up just from our parks, it really makes a big difference in the overall experience. Thanks to the story, you probably remember the classic attractions from the days of Walt Disney. This one may be a 30-year-old ride, but it's still a spell-binding story. Pirates of the Caribbean is probably the attraction that's regarded as the most story-intensive attraction that we've ever done. Pirates of the Caribbean is one of the attractions that Walt Disney personally supervised. In fact, I think it was the last attraction that he personally supervised. And it has a wonderful story and a wonderful sense of storytelling from a theme park. Pillaging pirates, madcap maidens, the quest for buried treasure. It's Pirates of the Caribbean. And it puts you smack dab in the middle of a swashbuckling fantasy adventure. In case you don't know what, what pirates are all about, the first thing we do is remind you. The first thing you see is a skeleton with a sword through his chest. We're introducing the audience to all the things that are about pirates. There isn't a narrative there. It's a narrative of images throughout, but it is about a, a lighthearted look at pirates and the trouble that they cause when they get into. This rollicking adventure is one of the best stories from the past. But what kind of stories are the Imagineers telling today? At the Disney MGM Studios in Orlando, Florida, you'll find one of the best. A 60 mile an hour head rush of adrenaline pumping pleasure. It's Disney's newest coaster and it's called Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith. The announcement of this new cutting edge coaster rocked the theme park world. When they first announced that uh, Disney and Aerosmith was going to be tied together in an attraction, uh, a lot of us went, whoa, this is going to be cool because it shows edginess. It shows that the Imagineers of today aren't the Imagineers that our fathers knew. It's a whole new concept. This coaster is cool and it's entirely in the dark, but it's the story that makes it a one-of-a-kind theme park thrill. The story is really important for Rock and Roller Coaster because the name itself suggests an average ride, a roller coaster. Everybody's seen them, everybody's done it. The storyline here separates the fact that it's a roller coaster with a, an experience. Disney stories often begin while you're waiting in line. This is what Disney calls the pre-show. It starts out with this recording company that we created, a fictitious one called G-Force Records, that has their home studio here at the Disney MGM Studios. At Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith, you start by entering a recording studio and come face to face with the band Aerosmith. Knowing Disney and what they put into these Magillas, I knew that it would be nothing short of a, a ride to the moon and back. And then when I heard it was a rock and roller coaster, it was like, what else? What, what's the question? We're there. So we were ecstatic. In the story, Aerosmith is late to a gig and offers you some backstage passes. The hitch? The concert's on the other side of town. Off we go then, out of the studio, and there is a stretch limousine that's going to take us to the concert. And of course, because we're late for the concert, it's going to take us there very, very fast. The limo, of course, is the coaster. Rock and roll tunes pump through a state-of-the-art sound system. A red light. Traffic is jammed. Then, put the pedal to the metal, because before you even leave the station, it's 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. And a twisting, turning, head-banging trip through downtown Hollywood. Yeah. 
the story is really a race to the concert. And that kind of story overlay is, is what we do at Imagineering. Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith is a great example of how story makes a difference. But it's only the first step. It's a long road to making a ride into reality. What's next? Putting it down on paper. With painstaking attention to detail, each scene must be mapped out on a storyboard, just like those used in the movies. The storyboard process is where we really decide what the story of the attraction is going to be. The storyboard is the Bible for every new attraction. We refer back to the storyboards through the whole design process. The storyboards help you keep focus on what the, the main story is as, as we move along, as we build our model, as we do our illustrations. Once the illustrations are complete, a scale model is created. This meticulous mock-up is a dead ringer for the real ride. We make the model at a certain height so that the art director can stand in the model with their eyes at about the same height like the guest's eyes would be. And then you can look through the model and carefully identify how all the pieces look next to each other in the right configuration. Once the models are complete, they turn to the computer. It allows Imagineers to virtually ride their creations before they build them. Designs and mock-ups take years, but they're still just the beginning. Everything is tested over and over, and then they test it again. We'll have Imagineers who have already ridden something, you know, a couple of years before it actually goes into the field. And we'll tweak and we'll see, does this work exactly how we thought it would, or is this too scary or is it not fun enough? We'll make all the adjustments necessary. After years of toiling over stories and mock-ups and riding through testing facilities, it's finally time to build the real thing. But when building in the real world, suddenly you have real problems. How do you turn storyboards in a model into a mammoth mountain that will thrill thousands of visitors a day? The perfect example can be found at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom. It's called Splash Mountain. It puts you smack dab in the middle of a feud between Br'er Fox and Br'er Rabbit. And then it takes you to the top of the Magic Kingdom and drops you to the watery depths below. It's almost like going through a three-dimensional movie. We've got a beginning, a middle, and an end. And wherever you see the characters in this ride, you see them in their typical poses of their relationships to each other. So the whole story is you're going along. It's, you, know, you go through the happy place. You're singing songs. As you progress through the ride, the mood gets a little bit darker. The music changes. The lights come down. The, the colors get darker. And then all of a sudden, you, you've almost forgotten the fact that you're going to come around the corner and voila, you're going to go up this drop. And you know that something is about to happen. If you've made it this far, it's too late. You're going to go up and you're going to come down. And when you do, it's a heart-stopping, skin-soaking 52-foot drop. You'll be glad when it's over. Splash Mountain may be the simple story of a wily fox and a curious rabbit, but it was a bear to build. The ride had to be an exact replica of the scale mock-up. So how do you turn a one-inch scale model into an 87-foot mountain? Once that model is done and complete and bought off, we will then take it and divide it up into little cubes, put it in a computer, and do an XY axis CAD drawing off of it. This information is sent to a rebar bending machine. This powerful contraption twists and bends rods of steel into cages that will form the skeletal structure of the mountain. Those cages, and there will be thousands of them, then get shipped to the site where there's a major primary structural steel that's been built, and they get welded onto that steel and the mountain starts to take shape in the form of a frame. Specialized sculptors then take over. A hulking mass of metal is transformed into a whimsical mountain. We come through with lath, plaster, and some of the best artisans in the world come in and sculpt rock work. The finishing touches? Paint and plants make the mountain come to life. It may be a mountainous marvel on the outside, but Splash is a mechanical monster on the inside. You have all the normal challenges of building a building. You have air conditioning, you have to have emergency exits, you have to have ways for maintenance people to get around. To make sure we got everything right, we rode that attraction 
I think close to 200 times. And there were times when we were writing it in the middle of the night. And now, inside of this very complicated building, we were able to tell the story of all these characters of the Briar Patch. When it comes to water rides, Disney's Splash Mountain is as good as it gets. Up next, the Imagineers give up the secrets behind their most advanced ride vehicles. Imagine falling 13 stories in a runaway elevator. And later, the inside story on the Imagineers special effects shows. It's Radical Rides when we come back. In the battle for theme park dominance, they're the ultimate secret weapon. They are the master magicians behind Disney's theme park magic. They're called Imagineers. They create every ride and attraction inside Disney's 10 theme parks. But how do they do it? They always start with a story, but these tales take you places you've never been before. Imagineers use lots of tricks to tell their stories. This one may come as a surprise. Ride vehicles. For Disney, they're storytelling machines. Every single day, Disney ride vehicles are bumped and battered, twisted and tortured. They take the punishment a Disney ride dishes out. It's got to run 16 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Disney has thousands of ride vehicles. They're on three continents spread throughout 10 theme parks. The inspiration for Disney's most advanced ride vehicle came from one of their most popular attractions, Star Tours. Located at California's Disneyland, the Disney MGM Studios in Orlando, and Disneyland Paris, it was the very first motion simulator that was combined with film inside a moving theater. When Disney transported people into the world of Star Wars, their motion simulator was a theme park first. Everybody loved Star Tours. It was the first time we'd ever done a simulator. Anybody had done a simulator in a theme park environment. We said, what could we do? What's the next step of, of a simulator? So what if you put store tours on wheels? Research began. A new breed of ride vehicle was born, called EMV for Enhanced Motion Vehicle. It was a quantum leap in ride vehicle design. You can think of them as simulators on wheels in its simplest term, but they're very sophisticated vehicles which allow us to drive through a space but also have you moving dynamically and pre-programmed in that space. The Indiana Jones Adventure at Disneyland was the first to use this revolutionary technology. Murderous mummies, flaming fireballs, slithering snakes. Forget the real world, because this is an Indiana Jones adventure and you're in the driver's seat. This bone rattling off-road experience bounces and bumps its way through an ancient temple in a desperate attempt to escape the wrath of the gods. Nothing like it had ever been created. Bringing this rousing ride vehicle to life wasn't easy. The Imagineers had to do an endless amount of testing to get everything right. We then started building mock-ups inside this facility to say, what would happen if we, you know, had, you know, the bad guys coming at you? What would happen if we had, you know, booby traps you were going through? It took us literally 10 years to create a vehicle which is not programmed by the engineering of the track, but is programmed by almost an artist, if you will. With a computer in hand, an Imagineer was jerked and jostled as he programmed the car's powerful movements. We had to come up with a system where the vehicle could run through this temple and have complete motion and simulate running over skulls or running over rocks or going down a mudslide. All that had to be programmed. It's the motion system that takes this ride beyond reality. So a scene where we have a huge snake leaping out of the car, the car repels in horror the same way that a guest or you'd be shocked by a frightening thing. The car can literally react to that. The Indiana Jones ride vehicle was another first for the Imagineers and opened the door to a whole new generation of Disney attractions. If you thought Indiana Jones was intense, then you'll find the tower to be terrifying. 
the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, that is. Located at the Disney MGM Studios in Orlando, it's big, it's bad, it's 199 feet of sheer insanity, and it's got a ride vehicle that everyone can relate to. Well, we knew we wanted to do something with an elevator. It's one of those ride systems that most people get to probably ride in just about every day. So yeah, yeah, let's take something familiar, which is an elevator, but put a twist on it. Well, what's the worst thing that could possibly happen in an elevator? Five unlucky hotel guests, one creaky elevator. Suddenly, lightning strikes the building, and the elevator disappears. Now it's your turn. You've booked a room at the Hollywood Hotel. The only way to get there? A shaky-looking maintenance elevator. Couples room number five. Please, do enjoy your stay. The cab ascends. First floor, ghostly apparitions beckon you to join them. Next stop, the fifth dimension. Suddenly, you are thrust forward. No elevator has ever done this before. <laughs> Making this runaway lift come to life was nothing short of impossible. Disney's Imagineers approached a major elevator manufacturer for advice. We went and explained to them that we wanted to send people rapidly down an elevator shaft as if they were crashing. And they turned pale and said, you don't understand, for over 100 years, our mission has been to prevent exactly what you're trying to do. But having the ride system take guests up and down wasn't enough. The Imagineers came up with a completely original concept. They said, what if? The elevator goes up and down the shaft, but eventually it stops on a floor. When the doors open, the elevator actually leaves the shaft. It's one of those things where you're sitting in a meeting and you say it and everybody goes, ooh. The insidious elevators move vertically just like any other, but they also move horizontally. These elevators are freestanding ride vehicles that move independently under their own power. When the ride vehicles need to move up and down, they actually drive themselves into a lifting mechanism. They ascend through one shaft, leave the lifting mechanism, and then move forward through a Twilight Zone scene. They then move into a second shaft and onto a drop lift mechanism for the heart-stopping 13-story freefall. And it's not just one drop. You fall over and over again. The ride vehicles for the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror are very unique in that they are controlled by cables and different systems that hand the vehicle from one area of the building to another. Computers are the secret to keeping the terror on track. It becomes very, very tricky to track all these vehicles to make sure that everything is flowing. It really is like a ballet to make sure it's all flowing smoothly. But there were problems. What happens when you drop an elevator down a shaft at insanely high speeds? One of the things we found out was uh, when you pull the elevator vehicle down, you create a lot of pressure underneath the elevator. Just the air gets compressed. We ended up compressing the air so quickly that we actually blew out the walls of the building down in the uh, bottom of the shaft. The problem was quickly solved. And thanks to the tower's incredibly versatile vehicles, there's nothing else like it in the world. Now, you take that drop ride and stick it out in the middle of the field somewhere, and no, it's not going to be one of the best rides in the world. But where it's located, inside the hotel, make it one of the best non-roller coaster rides in the entire world. Coming up, an inside look at the Imagineers' special effects shows. Did you say cheap three-day tricks? Uh... And a big, bad alien terrorizes Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom. And later, the secrets under the skin. Disney's robotic figures undressed. All of this and more when we come back. From Towers of Terror... 
to Indiana Jones Adventures, they are the creators of every Disney attraction. They're called Imagineers, and they're the masterminds behind Disney's theme park magic. Some of their most guarded secrets, special effects. We like to think that the effects bring the shows to life. It can create an environment and take you sort of out of the world and put you into some magical reality. Disney's special effects shows are three-dimensional theatrical experiences unlike anything you've ever seen before. And the effects can be startling. And the technology can be anything from uh, effects that have been done in the theater for hundreds of years or something that uh, has been just developed and is cutting edge and utilizes the most up-to-date video projection technology or computer animation. Some of the oldest tricks are still holding their own today. For instance, Pirates of the Caribbean, the fire effect has really, with the exception of real fire, been hard to beat over the years. People look at it and they know it's not real fire, but it's a very effective special effect. With today's technology, anything can happen. You see, you touch, you even smell. You never know what's coming next. It's Muppets, it's mayhem, and a one-of-a-kind 3D special effects show at the Disney MGM Studios in Florida. And Disney's California Adventure, it's called Muppet Vision 3D. This was the first time Muppets ever appeared in a Disney theme park. How did these two entertainment giants come together? A high-level meeting between the Imagineers and Jim Henson. Jim walked in the room and we pitched through a few ideas and he really sparked the idea of, of a 3D movie because he felt that the, the kind of spoofing and the fun of his characters would be so much fun to combine with 3D that the types of, of silly 3D tricks and gags um, would fit naturally with his characters. So it's going to be a swell demonstration, and at no time will we be stooping to any cheap 3D tricks. Did you say cheap 3D tricks? Uh... <gasps> 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 ah! oh, oh, and here's something I wanted to spring on you. <laughs> ah! uh... The Muppets are on the loose, and no one is safe from their goofy antics. You're seeing a demonstration of what they call Muppet Vision 3D every time you go in there, and that demonstration includes all these wacky things that happen in the theater. The effects? Bubbles, water, fog. Simple but effective ways to tell the story. And of course, it's all in 3D, so you can almost reach out and touch it. A big show needs a big finale, and Muppet Vision 3D is no exception. We decided we would blow up the theater, so the theater gets partially destroyed and damaged, but nobody gets hurt. But how do you destroy an entire theater without destroying the audience? Most of the effects are achieved through various different kinds of technology and combines lighting and strobe effects, large format projection, cryogenics, CO2, all mixed together and timed properly to give the correct impact. to apologize for our slight uh, technical difficulties, but I do wish to assure you that uh, no one was hurt, and, uh, and enjoy the rest of your stay, and come see us again sometime. Not all of Disney's special effects shows are cute and cuddly like Muppet Vision 3D. The discovery of a new technology led to one of the most terrifying special effects shows ever created. It's located in Tomorrowland at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom. It's intense, it's terrifying, and it's all in the dark. It's called the Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter. And you've never seen or felt a show quite like this before. Alien Encounter is really what we call a sensory thriller in that it uses as many of the senses as we can possibly figure out how to, how to use in a, an attraction. At this attraction, aliens want you to be their guest. You've got a front row seat for their newest demonstration. You enter the chamber where the experiment is to take place and are strapped into your seat so you can't move. But something goes wrong. The lights go out. You're in the dark. And a menacing alien has escaped. You see nothing. But then you hear and feel the hot breath of a horrific creature nearly inches from the back of your neck. It started from the idea of trying to tell a story with sound 
and allow you to have a thrill ride where a monster from outer space could get loose and could run around the theater and come up behind you and slobber on you and, and uh, create some havoc. You may think an alien is eating the audience and you, but it's all in your head. We had discovered a binaural sound technology that creates three-dimensional sounds and allows you to believe that things are happening to you and around you that really aren't. We thought that this binaural sound technology would allow us to create an emotional roller coaster, if you will. A new type of sound technology needs a new type of microphone. The way it works is that we have a microphone which is a human head model. And inside each of the ear canals are two high quality microphones that pick up sound exactly as a human head would pick it up. These roller coaster style restraints may make you think you're going to be turned upside down, but you're not. In this show, you never move an inch. These devices serve another purpose. We design seats with speakers as close as possible to the guest's head and these restraining devices that feel like they're holding you in to experience this experiment, but they're really getting the special effects lined up so that they're perfect for each guest that comes in there. Because binaural sound is able to place a sound psychologically very close to your head, you believe that that alien is literally right behind you. The extraterrestrial alien encounter is now considered to be one of the most terrifying attractions in Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom. Next, the Imagineers unveil their most complex creations. And later, it's not science fiction. It's the future of Disney's theme parks. Robots come to life when we return. Every day, hundreds of thousands of people enter Disney's theme parks the world over. The fantastic places they go, the eye-popping images they see, and the heart-stopping rides they experience are all thanks to one elite group of designers. They're called Imagineers. Many of their attractions contain a very special element. Some think they're real. It's hard to believe they're not. They're the Imagineers' most significant contribution to the theme park world. No, these aren't people, they're robots. Called audio animatronics figures, you won't find figures that look this real anyplace else on Earth. Walt Disney got excited about the idea of dimensional animation, of, of animation that actually was off the page. It was not flat, it was not two-dimensional. U.S. presidents, country bears, a rollicking band of pirates. These early audio animatronics characters were called A1 figures, but they were just the beginning. In this unassuming building at Walt Disney World, all of the audio animatronics technicians are trained to maintain these complex characters. Cameras have never been allowed inside this forbidden area. The secrets under the skins? A mind-boggling mass of tubes, wires, actuators, computers, and hydraulic pumps. This is a typical uh, mechanical assembly, assembly that you'd see inside the bodies. On the outer shell is what we use as a butyrate shell that holds the shape and anatomy of the figure. And then we put face skins. We use a PVC plastic material that's a hot mold injection type uh, process. And we do the same thing for the gloves that we call the hand skins. The Imagineer's never-ending quest to improve these figures led to a major breakthrough in 1989. They invented a technology that would make their figures frighteningly human. These advanced models are called A100s. The first one ever created? The Wicked Witch from The Wizard of Oz. Located at the Disney MGM Studios Great Movie Ride, she moves like no figure before. The A100 audio animatronics incorporated a new concept for us, which was compliance. And this allowed quick movements of the arm, which were absorbed by the body. Compliance gives us the capability of controlling the force that either pushes and pulls against a function. On the older A1 figures, the Imagineers had to sacrifice speed for control. Not anymore. If I do a fast arm motion with myself like this and stop, 
it looked pretty smooth and natural because my body has built-in compliance. The discovery of compliance changed everything. The body doesn't just shake, which makes it look very unnatural. So this addition of compliance to our figure series really raised the level of believability and realism in our figures. Creating the figure movements is an art form. In fact, it's done by an animator, just like Disney cartoons. The animator has a very unique console input device that we have created. It's an in-house design that was designed and built by our systems developer. The animator's console allows the animator to animate the figure in a completely intuitive way. The Imagineers want everything to be perfect, and perfection takes time. Once the animator sits down in front of the console and actually has full access to the figure, I would say that it takes an animator a week to do 15 seconds of animation. But have you ever wondered what happens if something goes wrong during one of Disney's shows? Some figures have an emergency system. One example can be found at the Hall of Presidents at Walt Disney World. Lincoln and Washington have that fail-safe system where we have mercury switches in them to where we monitor how far they lean left or right or forward and back. If George or Abe aren't behaving, the show is shut down immediately. And then both those figures set in chairs, so we have the chairs rigged up to where the breakaway to where when they fail, they will just sort of slump down and then fall back and, and like they're going to take a rest and go to bed and go to sleep. This has happened at the Hall of Presidents on a few rare occasions. We got a lot of oohs and ahs from the guests out in the audience. I even heard one person when I was there that they thought we were reenacting the you know, assassination of, of President Lincoln. The Hall of Presidents may be the only place to bring every U.S. leader to life, but the most complicated and awe-inspiring audio animatronic show ever created can be found in Epcot's World Showcase. It's the American Adventure. The American Adventure Show is one of the most unique shows at Epcot or possibly in the world. And the reason it is, is the number of audio animatronic figures that uh, play in the theater. Ben Franklin, Mark Twain, Susan B. Anthony, America's greatest historical figures are brought to life eight times a day to tell a patriotic story of America. No actors, no stage managers. The amazing thing is that not one member of this cast is real. American Adventure was a special challenge because we had so many characters that are no longer alive. So looking at the characters, pulling up research, trying to understand how Ben Franklin would have moved, trying to understand how Mark Twain would move. With 33 figures in this show, the Imagineers had to create a complex carriage system to bring each of the 11 sets into view right on cue. This mammoth mechanical device takes up more room backstage than the audience does up front. Some of the figures do some astonishing things. Can you twirl a lasso? Probably not, but just take a look at this. Will Rogers actually literally twirls his lasso. That is not fake. He, that audio animatronic figure actually does the twirling of the lasso. The Imagineers will, no doubt, invent even more complicated audio animatronics figures in the future. Our goal is everybody knows that these figures are mechanical, electrical, electronic, hydraulic, pneumatic, right? But when we can put character into these figures and, and create the illusion of life, and pull the people into that character and they're believing this figure has come alive, then we have done our job to the best of our ability. Right? Coming up, we go into Disney's top secret research laboratory. You'll see their newest inventions are straight out of science fiction. And the Imagineers disclose their most intense thrill attraction ever. Stay tuned for a sneak peek at the space-aged future of Disney's theme parks. They're the leading force in the creation of theme park technology and story-driven attractions. They're Walt Disney's Imagineers. And as they enter the 21st century, their rides and shows will no doubt reflect the technological advances of the times. 
Their latest attraction is no exception. According to the Imagineers, it's the most intense thrill ride experience ever. And it's like nothing you've seen before. Located at Walt Disney World's Epcot, it's Disney's newest thrill, and it's called Mission Space. Ready to go and make new discoveries? Disney won't release footage inside the actual attraction, but they claim it will rival a trip into space. The notion is that you are an astronaut in training, and we're going to put you through the paces that astronauts go through to see if you have the right stuff. Forget the vomit comet. In this ride, you'll pull multiple Gs during the simulated liftoff and experience the weightlessness of space for the first time in any theme park attraction. When you blast off, you really feel like you are blasting off. We're actually putting sustained G-forces on the body, so you feel the thrust of the rockets. And then we take you to a destination, which I can't reveal right now. Mission Space is the most awesome visceral experience I have ever had on any ride. It's a quantum leap above anything that's ever been done before. Disney's Imagineers created the innovative technology for Mission Space. Their next big thing? A huge leap in audio animatronics. We created our autonomous walking platform in order to understand the next generation of electronic animation, by which I don't mean computer graphics, I mean physical robotic animation. It's just a completely reinvent animation. And the challenges that we set for ourselves were to untether the animation from the floor, so that instead of being bolted to the floor, the animation could actually walk around on its own. The project is well on its way to success, so don't be surprised if you see an audio animatronics dinosaur running through the park someday. So what's next for the Imagineers? I think every time we build a new major attraction, we raise the bar another notch. We live in the future. Everything we're working on now won't open for another two, three, four, five, six years. So we're already trying to project what's going to be entertaining and fun six years from now. Walt once said the best way to predict the future is to invent it. From a blank piece of paper, these uncredited creators of Disney attractions have designed and developed rides and shows unlike any other. Whether they are creating a 60 mile an hour roller coaster or bringing an alien from outer space to life, Disney's Imagineers will continue to think of new and innovative ways to excite, thrill, and delight their audiences. I once asked an Imagineer, where do you get all the good ideas? And he says, oh, we don't worry about good ideas. We only go after the great ideas. And I said, well, do you have a lot of great ideas? And he turned around and pointed to about 12 file cabinets and said, those are our great ideas, but our great, great ideas are the only ones that we ever produce. We get to see, do, and learn so many things in the course of our day-to-day -day lives here. It's, it's the greatest job in the world. Hi, Tracy Gallagher for the Travel Channel in front of the real Brady Bunch home. And look, it's Peter Brady! Well, actually, it's Christopher Knight. Peter was a character I played on the show. So it must have been really groovy living in this house. Well, this house was only used as an establishing shop. We shot the show on a soundstage in Hollywood. Uh-huh. So how's Greg? So if you're in the mood for a trip down memory lane, come aboard. The Travel Channel's got the real locations of all your favorite TV shows. TV Road Trip, September 1st at 9 on the Travel Channel.